Hello everyone and welcome to Learning Space. This week we are going to be talking about how to just get away from it all and, and escape our everyday worries to science. Uh, with me today is uh, Dr. Phil Plate and his wonderful wife Marcella. And um, as always, I have my co-host, uh, Georgia Bracey, and I'm actually stepping in for Nicole Gallucci, so pardon the transformation from purple to red this week. Um, she will be back after she attends the American Astronomical Society next week. Um, so without further ado, uh, let me just put aside a couple more bits of... of Administrivia, if you want to ask questions, you can ask on our YouTube channel or via the Google Events homepage or via Twitter using the hashtag learning space. And we're here to answer your questions about how to get away from it all. And to give us an overview, I'm switching it over to Phil and Marcella. Thank you. Thanks, Pamela. Thanks. Well, Science Getaways is actually Marcella's idea, so I'll let her take it from here. Mm -hmm. Well, we were on vacation a few years ago in the Galapagos Islands, and it was amazing. It was just the most memorable trip ever, and part of that was because there was so much learning and discovery on a trip like that. And I started thinking about it, and I thought, hey, there aren't enough opportunities to do that kind of thing. So Phil and I decided to put together vacations for people who were real science enthusiasts. So um, we go to interesting places, and we bring along scientists to help the guests learn about what there is to discover at those places. So so where all have you gone so far in your adventures? Well, we just started Science Getaways last year. So um, our inaugural vacation was at the Sea Lazy U uh, Dude Ranch, which is right near where we live. It's in Granby, Granby, Colorado. And it was fantastic. We brought along a geologist and a biologist. So every day we took field trips. We wandered outside. And our geologist, Holly, showed us you know, pieces of rock and explained what we were seeing and the history of the Rocky Mountains and our biologists explained the ecosystems and how aspen trees really aren't each individual trees, but they're genetic clones of the parent tree and, and uh, about the animals that live in that region and the, and the delicate ecology there. And it was, it was fantastic. Everybody had a great time. And this year we are going to Brasada Ranch, which is um, a resort in, it's near Bend, Oregon. And uh, that area is in the Cascades range. And so we're going to, while we're there, explore volcanoes. And volcanoes. That's, that's the theme of this year's trip. I'm very excited about this one. The idea is to, is to go someplace which you'd want to go to on a vacation anyway, that's you know nice and, and maybe comfortable, but uh, near the wilderness, near places you can go and do fun things, and then basically add science to it. So uh, last year, when we were in the Rocky Mountains, it, it was incredible. The Sea Lazy U Ranch is nestled in a valley. You're surrounded by gorgeous Rocky Mountains. It gets very dark there. So at night we could have a star party and it was, it was really nice. Actually, I had a telescope with me and we're doing the same thing up here in Oregon. It's, it's uh, near the Three Sisters volcanoes. Mm -hmm. We'll be hiking on an obsidian field. How mm -hmm. awesome is that? I can't wait to do that and destroy my boots. Uh, and, and again, it's a dark, dark night kind of a place. So I'll have my telescope with me and be showing people the stars. Exactly. That's going to be a lot of fun. Excellent. How large a group do you guys get or can you get? Because um, I looked on your site and I noticed you have closed registration, right, for this <laughs> yeah, trip? Yeah, so in about 10 but, days we so, saw them. Yeah, so how many, how big a group and, and what kind of people? Well, you know, um, it, it depends on the location. Um, at the Sea Lazy U, I, I guess kind of because it was the first one and people didn't quite know what to expect, we had about 26, I think 26 guests. Mm -hmm. This time we cut off registration at 68 and we had a waiting list 30 people long. Wow. So um, yeah, we, we don't want it to get so big that it becomes impersonal. Mm -hmm. So we decided to cut it off where we would have roughly 20 people in each of three um, uh, hiking groups. Not, not really hike, hiking, more like science walks groups. So we've got um, three scientists along. We've got an on-staff naturalist at Versada. We've got uh, Holly Brunkle again, our uh, geologist from the Colorado School of Mines. She's awesome. And, yeah, she is awesome. And Matt Schinderman is an ecologist at Oregon State Cascades who's going to come and do our third kind of walkabout for the guests. And so we'll split up into three groups every day. And 
But there's and another I, scientist too. Oh yeah, and he had this guy. I keep forgetting his <laughs> name. I take it for granted. <laughs> yeah. He'll be handling the astronomy part at right. night. The nighttime. Okay. Yeah. That sounds great. Um, and it's family friendly. Is that Very right? family friendly. Yeah. Um, I decided to to make this a trip that people could come and bring their kids and maybe have a little second getaway from their kids because this um, this resort has a kids day activity camp. So for the younger kids, parents can drop them off there, know that they're having fun and are safe during the day and go out and do um, you know, the sciencey stuff with us. But we've got lots of people bringing kids eight, nine, ten years old who are very excited about the science aspect and will be you know, joining us for all that stuff too. Yeah, oh I bet. There's so horseback riding. Yeah. Um, we're going to do, well, oh, did you I'm see not Pamela's eyes light up when you say that? Yeah. <laughs> Music. Horseback riding. Great stables right on the resort. Um, Phil and Holly are going to lead a mountain biking expedition one day while I'm off riding horses. And, uh, <laughs> and then I'll spend the rest of the time in the hospital. But, yeah, you know, maybe. <laughs> um, we're, we've got a canoe trip planned up on a, on a Cascade Lake up in the Three Sisters. It's going to be amazing. And um, then one day we're going to go volcano and cave exploring. The, the volcanoes in the region left these very large lava tubes underground that are just like huge cavernous cave systems. So we've got a local guide who's going to take us and uh, walk us around the, the lava caves. Oh, that's excellent. So nice to have local knowledge there too. Exactly. And that's, that's one thing we always look for is to get experts who really are experts about the place we're, we're going to. And Holly, even though she's at the Colorado School of Mines, um, she is from Oregon and knows the area really well, so she was super excited to be coming along again. Well, it, last year we did, um, you know, scientists give invited talks and that sort of thing, and, and we were doing this sort of thing, and um, there was a local historian who came with us. This was part of another organization's event. And she was telling us all about the history and even the ancient history of what we were what we were visiting, and we realized at that point that um, when you go on a vacation, right, you want to know about where you're going. I mean, you can go to New Orleans and have a good time, but the more you know about the history, the more you know about what's going on there, the cooler it becomes. And you can say, "Oh, you know what happened here 150 years ago? Well, this." And that became one of our goals uh, is simply to go someplace and learn about that place. So when we're going to see these volcanoes, we will learn about those volcanoes, mm -hmm. uh, as well as some of the other Cascade volcanoes in, in, that are in that area. If we do this again in, I don't know, Hawaii or whatever, you know, we'll learn about that place. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, a, a series of overarching sort of ideas behind this, besides going someplace you want to go anyway, and then adding science to it, learning about the local thing. Um, if you've ever done a cruise, and it, a lot of people have, you're kind of forced to do what they want you to do. And if you don't want to do what they want you to do, you're in your cabin or you're, you're going to the cafeteria. And we want to make sure that people can do what they want to do. If you want to go on, on this hike or if you want to just, just hang out and read or whatever, fine. And uh, I think that takes away a lot of the sort of the, the hectic pressure. We want this to be fun and we want it to be an, an environment where you can soak up your surroundings and the science involved with it. That's the best way to do it, we think. Yeah, that's awesome. So much more than just like having a tour guide on some, you know, trip that you might go on. Oh, um, absolutely. You know, it's, it's more focused, I think, sounds like mm -hmm. on science, which is great, which you don't often get. You might get a little history, but I don't know. It seems like it's rare that you really get um, surrounded by science, like you say. Absolutely. Yeah, and la in fact, at the Sea Lazy U Ranch, Ranch last fall, we, uh, on our last day, we, we just decided, let's go out and see what's along this creek bed. And... Um, it was unplanned. It really. was, yeah. yeah it, was a, it's, it was a discovery walk. We're like, oh, let's go this way now. And uh, one of the guests picked up a rock and looked at Holly and said, "Is this a fossil?" And yes, it was. It was a fo fossilized plant leaf. So she was able to explain how it had probably washed downstream from a hundred miles west and what what geologic era it was from. And then another guest picked it up. It was from the Cretaceous, said, by the way. It was sixty-five million years old, and it was sitting there. And she picked it up and got to keep it. Wow. <laughs> petrified wood just lying on the riverbanks. So yeah, it was pretty cool. There, there were, yeah, it, there's a lot of discovery to do if you just kind of relax and go about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. excellent. You know how relaxing science is, right, Pamela? <laughs> yeah. It's just a breeze, right? I, I, what I'm really loving is the concept of just 
take off and discovery will come when your mind achieves that I'm no longer freaking out that my email isn't getting done state. Yeah. Right. It has a real appeal of just get away and, and recognize we live in a universe full of awesome things and some of them are 65 million years old. Yes, <laughs> and at your feet if you look right. down. I, I think that um, certainly people watching this uh, are going to be interested in science because you know, because of you guys, and because of because of, I tweeted this, right? And so there's a selection effect where the people who already pay attention to us are are interested in science. But I think yeah. that that's true of most people. They just don't necessarily know it. They don't know that when they just go out and look up at uh, the, the stars at night, or look down at the rocks, or whatever, that they're they're seeing science, but they're only scratching the surface of it. And we kind of we kind of wring that out of them in this country, at least by the time they're adults, they don't they don't understand how much they're soaking in all of this science. And so we're hoping that in a relaxed atmosphere where the food is good and you're, you know, your, your sort of basic needs are being taken care of, you can, you can have that leisure time to relax and absorb all the amazing stuff. And, and it, uh, certainly see lazy you was, was spectacular. It was really nice yeah. there. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, going to volcanoes, uh, that's a dream of mine. So I, I'm really uh, looking forward to being able to learn more about them. I can imagine. Wow. All right. So tell about like, um, what kind of planning on and involvement on your part is it, you know, does it take to put one of these trips together? I'm just curious because just, just the fact that you guys decided to just do it and, and start this company is amazing to me and how much, so obviously you go somewhere where, you know, there's some people there and there's some activities already maybe <laughs> planned or at least available, but um, how much is what you guys do and put together and, and what does it take? Well, typically the way it goes is I'll walk into Phil's office while he's busy writing his blog and go, hey, stop doing that for a minute and listen to me. <laughs> and I say, how about this place or what about that place? And we'll hash it out, you know, pros and cons. Uh, the way we settled on Oregon was, I don't even remember. I don't remember. Said. But anyway, we... Yeah. we volcanoes. Volcanoes. Phil yeah. loves volcanoes. And, oh, and he was posting lots of pictures of volcanoes from the space shuttle, I guess. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. we kind of had volcanoes on our mind. And... We Hawaii were, was a little too yeah. logistically tough to figure out this year, so we thought, well, they're all mostly dormant in the U.S., but dormant volcanoes can be fun too. Right. So, it's it's a matter a little bit of his logistics. We're we're trying to keep it in the continental United States for now. Once we figure out how this all works and we have a few of these under our belt, then you know maybe we'll try some more exotic locations. We were on an airplane recently just coming back from a meeting and you know in the back of the magazine they always have a map of the US with all the airplane routes on it. So we were just looking at that. Hey how about this place? Is there anything here? You know what can we what can we figure out? Um, and again you know it's places we want to go. It's places we want to see. I figure if I want to see it so do other people. Oh yeah. Uh, and uh, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be astronomy. It doesn't have to be geology. It can be anything. It does have to have dark skies. Yeah, that That's helps. kind of one of our uh, if I'm If I'm going, right, I want to bring my <laughs> uh, right. But, it, yeah, so it was, you know, once you decide on the place, you start looking around. Uh, dude ranches or just ranches or resorts are typically really good for that sort of thing. You don't just want to be in a hotel uh, mm -hmm. because that doesn't give you a, a sort of a, a camaraderie, that, that mm -hmm. feeling of everybody's in this together. You're all sort of in your separate place. So if you have it in a, if, if it's going to be a place like that, something like a resort where they have the restaurants and the meeting places and everything that are spread out, you can be outside. It's more of a homey feel to it, or at least a supportive one. Um, and um, after that, it's just a matter of finding a place that has reasonable price that's near where we want to be, that has the sort of support we want, like naturalists and things like that. Yeah. where uh, we can grab them and go out and do what we want to do to bring the science to the people. That all sounds great. We do have a question from the audience. Yay. Uh, Nancy Graz is asking, Marcella, we all know Phil's professional scientific background. What is yours? Were you interested in science before meeting Phil? Um, I'm, I'm more... <laughs> <laughs> I, I was interested in science before meeting Phil. Um, I'm, I'm more of a squishy science person. So I always thought I would be either an environmental scientist or botanist because I love gardening and I love plants. I just think plants are amazing little microcosms unto themselves. And um, that didn't quite happen, but that's okay. <laughs> so that's why we try to incorporate scientists from lots of different fields into our trips to have a little something for everybody. 
So, you know, if, if you love ecology, then we've got an ecologist for you. And maybe you don't know much about the stars, but by the time you leave, you'll probably be an astronomy enthusiast. <laughs> and she also has the organizational skills, which I very sadly lack. Um, I'm expecting Pamela to be nodding her head sagely. Here. Um, so, you know, it, uh, all of the overhead, all of the sort of behind yeah, the scenes stuff is, is under her control. And she's done a fantastic job with that. It's not too tough. I get to go to these great places and spend a few days visiting different oh, resorts. The incentive is really just hard. trying to choose among them. So. Yeah, it's it's not too tough. She says, if I were in charge, there would be people on fire. There would be you know buildings <laughs> collapsing. So this is yeah, it's good that she's doing this. Oh, beautiful. So you guys, you split your um, big group into three or maybe two um, groups according to uh, what walks you said or. Um, well, at this, I, for this particular uh, event coming up in Oregon, for this one you do. Um, okay. we, we just kind of worked it out so, because we had three scientists to lead you okay. know, our, our nature discovery walks. We, we made it so that the, each, each group would be a manageable size. Okay. So, now do they you know, stay? And it all depends. It, it kind of depends on the location. So yeah. the next one, we maybe can only have 30 people or maybe we'll That's have fun. 50. Yeah. I don't know yet. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. Do you, um, you know, sort of encourage them to get to know each other and do some sort of like community building, if you want to call it that, or just, you know, icebreaker kind of stuff, you know, to kind of make that sort of happen throughout the trip? It kind of happens naturally. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at, at our first event, it, it, was, it was at a dude ranch. So everybody eats, you know, it's home style you're sitting in the dining room, but there are long dining tables and there are big dishes that get passed around and that kind of encourages people to get to know each other. So that worked out really well there. Because this group is a little bigger, I've got um, some ice breaking activities planned and okay. I'm bringing along, <clears throat> pardon me, some ir irresistibly fun uh, group games to help everybody get to know each other. Always like, who can resist okay. playing apples to apples or uh, <laughs> Pictionary? Um, so right. yes. even, even though it's a bigger group, there's definitely, I, I think, a sense of community will develop. In fact, um, more than 50% of the people who attended our function last year at the Dude Ranch are coming back this year. So oh, I think that speaks yeah. to how much they enjoyed it. And also we created um, for each of these trips a Facebook group that all everybody going on the trip could join. It's a private group. And mm -hmm. so people have been getting to know each other that way. And hey, who's gonna be in this area on this day? Can I catch a ride with you? Who wants to carpool to the airport? So it all kind of through social media, um, people kind of you know get to know each other a little bit beforehand. And by the end, we've shared so much and learned so much together that everybody is friends. It's really- No, oh, that's really cool. So you get to know them a little bit beforehand. I do. I think I remember the name of everybody who was at the branch <laughs> last year. Wait, what I absolutely Almost love- Almost 70 this year. I don't know if that'll happen. <laughs> What I absolutely love about this is is I know I one of my bucket list things is to do one of the National Geographic Science Tours of the Galapagos or Lake Titicaca or Antarctica because they have these, these amazing expeditions filled with scientists. But the thing with what you do is it's, it, it isn't something that has to go on somebody's bucket list. It's actually like normal vacation price for the most part. Yes. And, and as, as you checked out your competition, which I'm sure you did as, as good business people, were, were you purposely aiming to, to hit a different demographic than these big name companies are hitting? Yeah, I mean, I, of course, I checked out the competition and I looked to see what other groups were doing and I, I looked at their pricing. Um, and, and our aim was to keep it, you know, a little smaller and more personal and affordable. Um, you know, and I'm not, not going to say it's the most affordable vacation. It's not a Sandals resort package or, um, you know, a Carnival cruise. It's, you know, a, probably a little more than that. But when you consider the value added by the people we bring along and and the activities that we offer i think it's i think it's pretty reasonable for what you're getting and uh yeah we try to we just try to keep costs down as much as possible to make it available to the most people possible and and we have another question that i have to admit i selfishly like and you'll see why um <laughs> michael jobin asks marcelo will you get others like uh to do like you're doing but with other scientists to take a torch to take like to 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 start doing this on their own so so the the way i'm reading I'm this sure is you. is will you help organize other science getaways led by other scientists to other places oh like a franchise <laughs> 
Yeah. Oh, sure, I'll, I'll sell uh, licensing rights. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. You know what? I am pretty darn busy trying to do this. Most, not completely by myself, but mostly. <laughs> um, <laughs> I wow. love the accusing look that you gave right. Phil. I think all of us have given <laughs> Phil that look at one point. Or Beat in progress. That's my job. <laughs> <laughs> no, he comes in handy when I, because I don't know HTML. And so when I'm trying to make <laughs> things work on the website, Phil. You're taking a 20 minute break from the vlog. Get over here. Um, uh, I I would encourage other people to do it, but I'm not going to, you know, share my secrets or lay, lay out a, a book of instructions. No one else do should it. do this. <laughs> this is a terrible idea. But you know what? There, there are plenty of vacationers and plenty of science around. So if you feel like doing it, go for it. I mean, there are other groups doing it. Like you mentioned, the Nat yeah. Geo cruises and, and some other things. And we got this idea because we were doing uh, uh, vacations with uh, uh, the Center for Inquiry and all these other people. Uh, so there's plenty of room, and it doesn't have to be astronomy or geology or whatever. If if, if you want to do this, I you know sure go ahead. Um, <laughs> we wanted to do it because we had our own our own feelings about what it's like to go on vacation to add science to it. Somebody else might have a different idea about it. So yeah, sure, go ahead. And and I have to admit, as Astronomy Cast is is looking to to start doing this probably once every other year. Um, we did one embedded in a large group, and and the problem with being embedded in a large group, embedded on a cruise ship, is you're totally at everybody else's whim. And and so we're taking your model and uh, probably doing something much smaller. But we're yeah. thinking along those lines as well. Yeah, that's. I mean, really, Phil and I had been on a few cruises, and we quite frankly got tired of being herded around on and off the ship. Okay, go see Athens in 90 minutes and be back or we're yeah. without you. Yeah. <laughs> That's not really practical. Um, so we would always find ourselves, we, we never, um, you know, signed up for any of the, the cruise lines tours on land. We quickly discovered that we had a much better time if we went off and explored on our own. Yeah. Um, so that's that's why we're doing this ourselves because I'm maybe just a little bit of a control freak, <laughs> and I like to be in charge and I like to make sure things are getting done my way. So. In in fact, to to add to that, on on this last thing that we did, where we were in the Mediterranean, which was fantastic, it was really lovely. Mm -hmm. But they kept, you know, it, and she's she's not kidding. I mean, it was like you get to go to Athens for four hours or something like that. It's mm -hmm. not enough time to see anything. So we started, it was her idea, you know, let's go off on our own, we'll get a driver, we'll just see what we can find. And it, it worked so well that, that we just abandoned basically the cruise excursions. By the last day, we had, what, 20 people yeah. following us saying, we want to do what you're doing. And so it just sort of naturally happened that Marcella was sort of, you know, I'm going to take people around and do all this stuff. So it, it was, uh, it, it seemed like a great idea to just like, let's, let's make this official and do it on our own. So, so we have another question. Um, let me see. I just managed to. The new interface is still confusing me, so please forgive me. Um, so we have Daniel, uh, Daniel Playford asking Phil, next to astronomy, what is your favorite field of science? Well, all of them. Uh, <laughs> astronomy yeah, is my, my yeah. <laughs> Astronomy is my first and truest love. Uh, as far as science goes, but if next it would be geology, and uh, so I, I kind of lean a little bit on on that for science getaways. That the first one was in the Rocky Mountains, mm -hmm. and we learned about all the geology of that. This next one is volcanoes. Um, I would love to see that. It, if you think about it, when you're going on vacation, you're typically going to places that are gorgeous, places you you really want to see. If it's not a touristy place, if you're not going to Disney World, you're probably going to the Grand Canyon or something like that. So uh, a lot of these places have natural geology, natural uh, biology going on, and the ecology. So that'll that'll probably always play a part in where we're going. But, you know, if I make a list of what I want to see, um, you know, Hawaii, Iceland, uh, my dream is the Galapagos. Um, you know, one of the one of these days to be able to to pull that together. Uh, that's everything all at the same time. Uh, would be fantastic. But yeah, geology I think would be would be the answer to that question if I had to answer it simply. Yeah, I, I think perhaps the easier way to ask is is like I know if you ask me what is the thing I'm least likely to do, it's to visit a cadaver 
site where they have the cadavers <laughs> rotting in the fields. It's a dark sky facility. It's nicely isolated. I'm not going there. <laughs> so so if, if there is any scientific experiment or experience beyond the cadavers, because I've already taken that, that you would never experience, what's the thing that you don't want to do? Well, that, that sounds like a pretty good contender, I yeah, would say. Um, <laughs> well, that's one of those. No body farms, no morgues. What would we not do? I wouldn't do anything in the field of sanitation science, <laughs> I don't think. When I was in third grade, we did a tour of a sewage treatment plant. Mm, uh, okay. Yeah, I still remember that. So mm. I'm not very fond of heights, so anything that would involve being thousands of feet above the ground in a small vehicle that could plummet. In fact, when we were <laughs> when we were in the Mediterranean, we we went to the Greek island of Ia, and people have been there will know you can either walk up the mule trail that winds and winds and winds up, um, and takes a while, or you can take this. What do they call it? It's, it's a cable it's, car. It's, I guess it's, it's a just tram. A, a sky tram, and uh -huh. that it just that was a bit harrowing for me. So. <laughs> If Until I'm the two there, Greek guys sat in the car with us. They were a nice distraction. <laughs> they were a nice distraction. But yeah, probably uh, no parachuting, base jumping. Um, I, I'm guessing those uh, rides across the top of the rainforest canopy where you're on the giant netty things. Oh, that would be that. tough. I, I might brave it just because that's too much to resist. But you I would have to um, take some sort of sedative first. You wanted to do the zip line it. That's okay. Well, we I don't, time, I don't but... mind being high up if there's high speed involved. It's the slow. <laughs> you have to get it over with. You, really, right right. you have time to think about how horrible your death will be. Yeah, you can uh, calculate. The cable breaks. Let's see. Distance is one half at squared. It'll take me 14 <laughs> seconds to hit the ground. I'll be moving at this velocity. Yeah. Yeah, I, I took a ski lift through rainforest, and it was it, I I was with. Uh, Fraser's daughter who's like all of nine and all of a sudden she notices I'm white knuckling the railing I have one arm behind her white knuckling and she's like what's wrong what's wrong like everything's fine everything's <laughs> fine <laughs> everything was not no, fine no, no. I didn't know which ended into the panicking adult next to you yeah. <laughs> and uh, even though even though um, a lot of the, the thrust of these is going to be astronomy geology ecology biology that sort of thing um, if you sort of make a list of all the fields of science, if not all of them, but, but a lot of them, there are a lot of other things you can do. I mean, there's uh, the California wine region. There's a whole science making wine, mm -hmm. science making beer. Um, those might be grown ups only, um, but that's okay. <laughs> um, you, you had mentioned you and Fraser might do something every other year. Um, we're actually thinking about doing a couple of these a year. Um, sort of a small one and a big one. Big one might be family oriented. A small one would be a smaller group of just adults where um, people might be able to do grown up things the whole time and not have to fret over over the kids. Mm -hmm. um, and that could, I, you know, I don't even know what that might be. Uh, but the, the sky is not the limit in this case. So we know we, what it might be. We, 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 we can tell. Well, we, we can have, tell a little bit. We tell a little bit. Okay. A little bit. A little bit. Um, so next spring, oh, that, the perfect. plan is that we're going to have a long weekend trip to New Orleans, which doesn't jump out at people as science-y right away. But there are bayous and swamps and all sorts of cool ecology and interesting hydrology <laughs> going on <laughs> yeah. in that area. And we might throw in a little political science while we're there. I don't know. We'll see. There's a rich, rich history there, uh, Andrew Jackson and, and all of that, yeah. but also, uh, also beignets. Um, uh, and hurricanes. And hurricanes. So that will be an adults only. Yeah. Because New Orleans is not really so much a town to bring along your <laughs> seven-year-old. No, no. One, yeah. one never quite knows where things will go south. Plus, I think many crocodiles consider, consider children appetizers. Yes. yes. So Which is good because <laughs> uh, alligators are appetizers too. <laughs> If you ever had fried alligator, it's yummy. <laughs> true. is <Yeah>. true. <laughs> so cool. As as you're you're working on on figuring out how to do all of this, what is your bucket list besides the Galapagos? I mean there the, it's a big it's Antarctica. <laughs> I'm not going. No. That's that's <laughs> I'll not arrange her thing. it, but I'm not yeah, going. That's my thing, not hers. Don't like the cold so much. That's a good question. Which is though. funny considering I live in Boulder, but <laughs> I think Antarctic cold is a whole other level of cold. But that's a good question. Um, Kilauea in Hawaii would be great. An active volcano that's pumping lava into the sea would be fantastic. 
And also, of course, there are you know big telescopes there. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, On my bucket list is an archipelago in the South Pacific. Doesn't really matter which one. <laughs> Just not the one that Amelia Earhart decided to land on. Yeah, right. Or, you know, a bikini or any place where it might still be radioactive. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's it's really, it, it could be any place. Um, Tahiti, uh, you know, any place there's Tahiti, science. But yeah. at that point, I suspect that um, you have to deliver a hell of a trip because if, if somebody's going to spend 18 hours on a plane and, you know, God knows how much, how expensive that ticket is to fly there, uh, yeah, there has to be a heck of a thing planned uh, to support that. So that'll you know, that'll happen, I, I would guess. Um, it'll just be a little while so we can get our act together for that. Okay, so we have we have more questions coming in. Um, so so we have from Dan Peluso. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Um, would you ever consider doing space tourism together, e.g. Branson's Virgin Galactic? How about Dennis Tito's venture to send a married couple to Mars? Uh, feel free not to answer, but it was too good not to pose. <laughs> no. I would do the Virgin Galactic flight if I got to sit next to Leonardo DiCaprio. I heard he's <laughs> okay. Oh, well, that's true. Actually, um, you know what? They just auctioned, auctioned off the seat next to him at Cannes. So that's, oh, really? that's No, so that's out. Right. Um, <laughs> Uh, I get sick on a kid's swing, so uh, yeah, yeah, going up in a in a rocket is not going to be my thing. Um, but uh, arranging something like that, maybe I'll be happy to wave goodbye at the New Mexico spaceport as people take, you know, spaceship two up on their ballistic uh, ballistic flight. That might be a little pricey at two hundred thousand dollars a ticket. Um, but in twenty years, yeah, but, you know, yeah. this will be way down but, to only. $10, yeah, right. $10, That's a, you know, I'm more than happy to meet people who can afford something like that. Um, but yeah, that, that might be in the, in the far distant future. And, and the, the thing to Mars, no way. Yeah. I get bored too easily. I can't be in a small space <laughs> for that long. Whereas, you know, I live in this office and I don't ever actually need to go outside. So uh, mm-hmm. going to Mars would be easy if I had an internet connection and, a, you know, enough. <laughs> fleece pajamas and thermal socks to keep me keep me happy throughout that trip. Yeah, I, I'm kind of along with Phil on that one, but but I, I suspect your child might object. Um, there there Sorry, is a live, question. live TV here. <laughs> oh we so, turn that off. Oh well. So so we have a, a question from Nancy Graz. Any chance you'll get a you will host a getaway in the Northeast? I guess it's more like any plans versus any chance. Yeah. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, there's a chance of, of any place. Um, we have looked at the Northeast. There are issues with that, mostly dealing with weather. Um, it, you know, we, we are both actually from uh, the East Coast, from the DC area, so we know that winters there are extremely cold and summers can be unpleasant. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and spring and fall can be unreliable if you try to do stuff outside. It could rain at a moment's notice or anything like that. That has been kind of holding us back a little bit. Plus, trying to find some overarching theme for uh, a week or a weekend in the Northeast. If if people have suggestions, mm-hmm. absolutely. Um, Science Getaways is on Google Plus, uh, or you can just you can find us easily. We have a website, sciencegetaways.com. Send us suggestions. We'll be happy to, to to keep a list and take a look if you've got a good idea. Yeah, I mean, and- I have to do all this kind of. Blind, you know, I just get on the internet and search for resorts that have the features we need. And if, you know, it's possible I'm missing something. So if anybody knows of some really fantastic places, I was in New Hampshire when it was syrup making time, and I went to yes. a breakfast place that made their own maple syrup, and I had that on French toast, and Excellent. I can still taste it. That was like six years ago, and it was like it was <laughs> fantastic. So actually, you know, a a, a maple syrup factory touring syrup making adventure would be uh, that would have some leverage with me and and i i think the the ocean might have a little bit to offer i'm thinking of some place like bar harbor or something where you can just throw a net out to a tidal pool and do yeah. do accounting of of what sorts of critters are still actively available there yeah we talked about that too i've been to acadia national park in um in maine a couple of times and uh the problem there is insects. <laughs> when it's finally warm enough there to really enjoy it, it's like eight bazillion armor-plated uh, biting bugs come in. So it's just a matter of, of timing and planning and all of that. And altitude. Altitude helps with the bugs. If you go high enough, they're, they're right. slightly deterred. Oh, yeah. So, so, you know, Big Bear, of course, that's the other end of the country. But yeah. what is that? Mount Cadillac? Is that in Maine? Or, or 
Mount uh, Washington. Washington, New Hampshire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's. So, one so going. there's. I, I, we, so New, New England will happen at some point. I've done some research into that, and it's just mm. a matter of. And our daughter is a history dork and uh, she's huge into American history, so the Northeast would probably oh, throw her. Yeah, we got a chance to go there. Yeah. So, so we we have a, a comment. Um, Pat O'Brien's hurricanes. I'm in, and another one. Why not the science of beer break? And and those are both things that you alluded to. And then we have this is one that I think the answer will be yes. Jim Meeker asks. We're all thinking Pamela should lead a group to Southern Illinois for the solar eclipse in 2017. Does the yes. path get near you? It's it's 30 miles south of where I live. Right. So, oh wow. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Um, I, Wait, how I've, is that possible? Because it's only 200 miles north of where we live. That whole cutting the diagonal across the country over time, the stupid rotation of the planet, long stripy line, yeah, it, it cuts north of you, south of me. This is actually the rock and roll or music or grunge or blues cruise, depending on uh, if you go listen to it, listen to it. If you go watch the solar eclipse in Seattle, in um, uh, St. Louis and Nashville, it's going near all these big, amazing cities oh, for that's music. Fine. That's cool. Right. We may do something Four for years. that. It's, um, it, it really isn't that far from here. It's uh, it, north of us in Wyoming. Um, I'm not sure. I, I wonder. I'd have to look at the path and how it how it cuts across. But I know it's not uh, even a day's drive from here for us. So it would be pretty easy to you know throw the telescope in the back and, and do something for that as well. And if it's in Wyoming, I remember looking at it a few months ago. Uh, lots of geology, lots of dinosaur stuff in that area too. So it would be, yeah, we could do that. Well, speaking of beer, because Pamela, you, somebody mentioned beer in their question. Um, the next event we've got going, actually, it's not, it's a little different from a group of vacationers going off together and spending a week together, but we are putting on the first that I know of public science festival in Boulder, Colorado. There, you know, people think Boulder and they think, Maybe Morgan Mindy, Morgan Mindy, <laughs> marijuana, <laughs> hippies, marijuana. Yeah. <laughs> At least there, one of those. There's is a lot of beer here, and it's going to happen in Boulder on, over the same weekend as Great American Beer Fest is in Denver. So if you're coming to Denver anyway, you could pop up for a day. We're going to have some beer events as well. We're going to have a craft brewer from a local um, small brewery talk about the science of making beer and. And it's, so. it's, it's going to be a weekend, a long weekend with lots of, um, we'll have science talks as well as some outdoor stuff. We won't go into too many details. I will say we'll have some world-class people coming to speak. Uh, people are going to want to do this, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of the local stuff, again, that we, you know, we might be able to take people out into the, uh, out into the hills here and, and, and check out the Rocky Mountains and do that sort of thing. This incredible area. And you, yeah. you may not think science when you think of Boulder. In fact, mm -hmm. there are three major astronomical research institutes I can bike to from my house. And that's not including Ball Aerospace, which is building the James Webb Space Telescope, basically everything on it. And everything that's on Hubble right now is essentially built at Ball. They're building the B612 Foundation Sentinel Telescope to look for uh, at near-Earth asteroids. Uh, I mean, this is a major, major, major facility. So uh, there's a, a ton of science going on here. And that that's just astronomy. We're not even talking about... Uh, the geology that's here, the biology that's here, the uh, aeronautical engineering that's going on here. Paleontology. So, and paleontology. Yes. yes, we will have, in fact, a paleontologist speaking. Right. And um, alternative energy researchers. And uh, climate. And, uh, uh, NCAR is here, the um, uh, National Center for Atmospheric Research. Yeah. So there's a ton of opportunities here to get a lot of science together. And we want to... We want people to know that Boulder is uh, sort of the, one of the central places for science being done in this country. It's a small and, town, too. So and, it's and pretty for amazing. Those and for those of you who are confused about how some folks are asking questions, if you go to, the, we apologize for the new Google Plus interface, um, <laughs> if, if you go directly to the YouTube page, so start the video on whatever page you're viewing us on, there's a YouTube link in the lower right hand corner. Click to YouTube, any comments you leave on YouTube will appear on my screen within the Hangout and allow me to post them in here. Uh, you can also use the hashtag learning space with no space in it anywhere on Twitter or Google Plus and that will get pushed in here as well. So either hashtag learning space or uh, go to the YouTube page. 
and and this is this is an absolutely fantastic conversation that we're having about science getaways and and I know Georgia you actually worked for a period of time at some place where you got to be a nature interpreter and you must just have lots of ideas listening about this and I'd love to hear what's what's in your head oh well I did but um and we did lots of sort of like I don't know mini versions of this so just you know nature walks and we were always trying to come up with you know, some other interesting way to get um, both kids and adults involved and give them, you know, choices of things to do um, because that's really important. You know, you said how you don't want to feel like you're being shuttled here and there and, and, you know, not have a choice. And it's great, you know, to have a choice like that. So, and we were um, developing nighttime things, which was really cool. So it was an arboretum. So, of course, you come during the day to look at the trees and um, hike the trails, but they were just beginning to do some really great nighttime activities. Um, nice. And some of those were like full moon hikes was a big yeah. thing, um, <laughs> which is really cool. And, um, you know, because sometimes, you know, amateur astronomers, we don't like the full moon so much, but actually um, it worked really well for getting people to come out because everybody, you know, we love the moon. It's like our friend. So, um, you know, we were starting to get into um, some of those more creative things to do outside and to have speakers come in and talk about um, things a little more science oriented than just, you know, fun stuff. So getting in a little more into science, which was right. really great. Um, but I had another question for you guys, too. You had a Facebook page, right, for your, your people, right, mm -hmm. that come. Um, and you probably get some feedback from them. I suppose on that and I was wondering if you look for feedback from your people in other ways like do you do you send out surveys or you know after trips or do people just you know email you and say hey you know this was great but I didn't like this so much or you know and then do you use that I'm sure you do but maybe you could tell us some interesting things you've gleaned from your participants uh, we did. We did uh, a short survey. I like to keep it to ten questions or fewer. Well, one because it gets <laughs> okay. you a free survey That's monthly good. account, <laughs> yeah. and two because people don't like long surveys. But we we did a short survey after our last event, and I got to say that it was almost embarrassing. How, yeah, stop how being I, too awesome. Yeah. And it was uh, really all right. Yeah, um, <laughs> uh, that's a terrible problem to have. But I mean, there were some suggestions about yeah, sure. about um, uh, timing and and the different activities and and all of that and stuff that's really easy. It's just adjustment. That's right, all. Right, right. Yeah, uh, and I made note of all those, and and I'm addressing them in our Oregon <laughs> trip. So, um, and actually, the per one of the people who made a suggestion is coming along to Oregon, so I have to make sure I don't forget that one. Um, <laughs> do that one. But absolutely, you have to get feedback from, from the people that you're, you know, presenting a product to. So, yeah, yeah. that's, that's yeah. how we do it. it. Logistically, it's interesting because you're going to a place that already exists, and you are the middleman, basically. Mm -hmm. So, if one of our if one of our guests has a problem, they go to Marcel, and then Marcel has to go to the to the people in charge, and you have to work all that out. And she's fantastic at making sure that's all good. Uh, it's it's interesting to see. It's interesting from my point of view because I'm watching all this happen to see how things get fixed, to see how the people are reacting, and planning this logistically is interesting. You mentioned the full moon hike. Well, we don't want to do a full moon hike because we want to be able to take a telescope out and see stars. So. Uh, when do you plan these? Well, you plan these around new moon, but you know maybe you want it to end four or five days after new moon so that you can see the moon. So the first one was scheduled that way that we had dark skies, yeah. But the last night you could see the crescent moon. Got a little cloudy where we were, um, so uh, it, it didn't work out perfectly that way. But you know it, it should be. You can you go by the almanac and look at when when the good weather is, when the moon's in the right phase. And, and all of that sort of thing. It's um, it's not just when you know when do we have time to do this. Yeah, it's, you can't just pick a pick a date. It's it, when I'm looking at dates. The first thing I do is I come in and say, okay, get out your sky map, your yeah. calendar, and let's see where what we're going to be. See, um, and it's yeah. going to work. And we've I've spent quite a bit of time trying to work around the phases of the moon. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> the stars literally have to align for yes, this. Yes, yes, I know they can be annoying. It's very true. But, you know, it all depends. I'm sure the people that you take are excited to probably see just about anything in the sky. I don't know. Or, or maybe they are more experienced. Do you get people that, you know, have, I never realized that was up in the sky or I could see that or the stars were mm -hmm. so bright or that's the Milky Way. Oh, my God. You know, that. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 
it's, it's kind <laughs> of fun Way to watch. Was amazing. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, people come with their significant others, and one person I imagine is it, this is the way it goes: is oh, we need to go on this great vacation because there will be lots of astronomy, and I love astronomy. And the other person's like, oh, uh, it's not my thing. But then there's something for them too. So you'll watch the person who's way into astronomy but has never ridden a horse suddenly discover that they like riding horses. Or you'll watch the person who loves riding horses but has never mm -hmm. looked through a telescope want to go out every night and look through the, the telescope. So And so for couples, I think it can be kind of fun too because you can kind of cross over into each other's area of interest and find find some common interests there. We did see that quite a, yeah, quite a few. We, we, we had one person time. who was like totally... Oh, I'm not into this stuff. But by the end, it was, yeah, yeah, she was pretty enthusiastic. Yeah. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah, so they find things they didn't know, you know, exactly. were so awesome about the other person's, you know, hobby. And I can't, I can't tell you how long we spent on our first nature hike with our ecologist talking about DNA cloning of aspen trees. Yeah, really cool, and actually. Everybody was just, I was like, okay, it's been 20 minutes. Let's, yeah. <laughs> but everybody wanted to talk about the aspen trees. Of course, it was fall. They were golden. It was beautiful. And that helps a lot. But, um, you know, so that's the, somebody who's into, who really likes genetics and never realized that aspen trees grow in cloned clusters. Mm -hmm. suddenly found that they liked trees. Oh, trees are cool now because they're clones. So and it's and fun. we're not rigidly, you know, making sure everything happens a certain way oh, at a certain no, time and everything. No. So there's time for that sort of stuff to evolve. Yeah. 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 What, what I'm really loving is, as, as we've been doing this Hangout, the YouTube, YouTube stream comments have been just absolutely filling with ideas of places you should go, things you should do. <laughs> so I'd, I'd strongly encourage you to go look and see what Lone Three Wolf and Dan Peluso and Michael Jobin and then all these other great folks are saying out there. Now, uh, Nicole Gallucci, the uh, normal host of the show, she actually points out... Never heard of her. That, is that the <laughs> yeah, Finders yeah Nicole, who is this? Oh, wait, Garvin, wait, I think... Garvin Flavin? Fnargan Hargan? What's think, her last name? I think she crashed. Googly Woochie. She was so, so Nicole points out that uh, the 2017 and 2024 eclipses cross in the same spot in Illinois. So there is a reason to come to Illinois so you can say that you experienced an eclipse from the exact go. same place twice on two or different Or you sources. do 2017 with us and 2024 with you. Yeah, that's true. That's true too. I assume that's Ed Murphy at the University of Virginia. He was yes. a grad school uh, classmate of mine and... Nicole knows him because she was at the National Radio Astronomy Observatory at UVA. We spent many a Saturday evening with uh, He was my roommate for years. Wife, yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. And I should mention, and maybe you can say more about this, Pamela, because you know more about what Nicole's going to do than I do. Nicole is going to be at the Boulder Science Festival because not only are we having world-class scientists um, give you know, public talks on their field, mm -hmm. but we're going to have what I'm calling a science carnival on the grounds of the hotel in Boulder. And the hotel is in a beautiful site. It sits right at the base of the Flatiron Mountains. It's right along Boulder Creek. They have big, beautiful grounds. So we're going to have booths set up just like at a carnival, but they're going to be science booths. So um, one of the people at, at a science booth is going to be Nicole. And what's she going to do, Pamela? She's going to have a booth dedicated to citizen science and trying to understand the wonderful science behind cratering, which allows you to do everything from try and understand the ages of different regions on rocky surfaces to, well, it, craters provide kind of nature's highway cutout that lets you see the stratigraphy of alien worlds. Um, so it's going to be how do we know that some of the asteroids on Earth or meteorites on Earth came from the asteroid Vesta. Uh, what science are we doing with asteroids? Uh, I'm sure she's going to be demonstrating uh, crater making, and I'm sure there'll be some comets involved just because it's fun to play with dry ice. Just yeah, never I, eat dry ice. I hope so. Uh, <laughs> she, uh, I saw her do the uh, comet demo where it's it's dry ice and charcoal and, and other bits and pieces, and you make a comet. Yeah. Uh, and it's uh, I saw her do that at Dragon Con last year in Atlanta, and she was fantastic. The crowd loved her as well they should uh, and so it's gonna be great to have her here and, and doing that and then for the kids who don't quite understand how seeing a crater on another heavenly body can show you its geography I think we're gonna do the edible asteroids are they edible asteroids or comets um, so they can make their own 
No? You don't know about this? Well, um, it's charcoal and dry ice. But, uh, oh, no, I thought yeah. there was one with, like, cookies and ice cream or something. So, so you oh. can do edible comets. Oh. I usually do edible, and Noisy normally does quite deadly. Oh, okay. Um, but we can probably arrange for both to be there for oh, okay. you. <laughs> well, I, I am a fan of eating comets, personally. Yes. There will definitely be hands-on comet stuff <laughs> in any case. So. Awesome. Wow. So as, as we're winding up on time, I, I'd like to thank everyone for, for coming to this Hangout and dealing with any technological foeballs or however you say that word, foibles that foibles. you may have. Foobar. <laughs> I tried to combine foobar and foibles into one word and it didn't. Be a good it, word. Foibles. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> so, I'm not so, furballs. So, That's all I thought because I think my cats, yeah. Right. So, yeah. so we, we appreciate everyone dealing with all of the technical quandaries that may have occurred as we all learn the new technology associated with the new version of Google+. Um, there will be another hangout tomorrow hosted by Emily Lakdawalla of the Planetary Society and then Friday as always will be our weekly space hangout. Um, Sunday night is the virtual star party and astronomy comes astronomy cast comes back after a two week one week hiatus tomorrow um, not tomorrow on Monday um, and we are still working and sorting out topics and everything but you can find everything on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash astrospherevids. Um, so go do science at cosmoquest.org. Uh, go get away and do more science in the field uh, with the science getaways. Uh, what is your URL? Yeah, what's your website? It's second. sciencegetaways.com. And right now the homepage is still talking about Oregon with a big red message that says it's full but as soon as we're ready to open up registration for the boulder, boulder science festival which should be in the next couple of weeks that will be on the front page of sciencegetaways.com and that's getaways with an s on the end um, so we'll always keep that pointing to the most recent thing that you can participate in and if you want to email with suggestions um, you can just email info at sciencegetaways.com okay and so thank you. Oh. This has been absolutely fabulous. And do you have anything you want to add, Georgia, before we close out? Um, no, except that I'd love to go <laughs> on the next trip. If I'd like to go to the volcano one. That sounds awesome. But, I, I'm yeah. thinking Iceland where they have Icelandic horses to go along the volcanoes. <laughs> really? I could totally get behind cool. that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I was thinking the hot springs. Mm. Yeah, it's amazing what happens when you announce a company like this. All your scientist friends say, you know, do you need another astronomer? <laughs> yeah, we have lots of volunteer help. Hey, I, I, I would God pay to go to Iceland with you guys. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Yeah, well, th this thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, this was thank a pleasure. You. So that, that is it for this edition of The Learning Space with, from CosmoQuest.org. Thank you.